Welcome to module two. In this module, we'll explore the tick species found across the Midwest and the Northeast. By the end of this module, you should be able to name the common tick species found in the United States, Midwest and Northeast, recognize anatomical differences between the major tick species found in the United States, and identify a tick based on an image. The ticks that we'll be covering today include more of the common ticks in the Midwest and the Northeast, including Exodus scapularis, otherwise known as the black-legged tick or the deer tick, Dermacenter variabilis, the American dog tick, also called the wood tick, Amblyoma americanum, the lone star tick, Amblyoma maculatum, otherwise known as the Gulf Coast tick, Ripocephalus sanguineus, the brown dog tick, and finally, the recently introduced Haemophysalis longicornis, otherwise known as the Asian longhorn tick. Now we will go through the species in more detail. Please note that we're referring to unfed ticks in this module, and that changes in appearance due to feeding will be covered in module three. The first species we will cover is Exodus scapularis, also known as the black-legged or deer tick. Let's focus on the adult female first. There are three body parts of a tick that can be useful in photo identification. The mouth parts, number one, the scutum, and the allosputum, number three. Let's take a closer look. Notice the length of the mouth parts. The length of the palpi is greater than the width of the basis capitulum. The scutum is round, dark, and solid in color. And the allosputum is bright red or an orangey color. These colors can change with feeding and with age. These three characteristics are key in identifying an adult female black-legged tick. Now let's take a look at the adult male black-legged tick. Both the mouth parts and the sputum are important in photo identification. Like the adult female, the adult male black-legged tick has palpi that are longer than the width of the basis capitulum. The sputum is solid and dark. Notice that it takes up the entirety of the dorsum. These two characteristics are key in identifying adult male black-legged ticks from photo submissions. Now let's look at the nymphal stage black-legged tick. Once again, there are those three body parts of a tick that can be useful in photo identification. The mouth parts are the palpi, the sputum, and the allosputum. Let's take a closer look. Like the rest of the Exodius ticks, the nymph has palpi that are longer than the width of the basis capitulum. The sputum is dark in color, and the allosputum is a light gray in color. These three characteristics are key to identifying black-legged tick nymphs. It is also important to note that the size difference between nymphs and adults is quite large. Nymphs are very small, about the size of a poppy seed. Can you see them on this muffin? Now let's take a look at Dermacenter variabilis, more commonly known as the American dog tick or the wood tick. We will focus on the adult female first. Just like with the black-legged tick, we will examine the mouth parts, sputum, and allosputum. Unlike the black-legged tick, the American dog tick has mouth parts that are equal in length and width. The adult female has a pale yellow pattern on the edge of its sputum. Wisconsin folklore calls it their pearl necklace. The owl's sputum is bumpy and dark brown. And festoons are present. These are ridges that are along the back end of the tick. Short palpi, a pale yellow pattern on the sputum, and a dark brown body with a ridge of festoons on the edge are key in identifying the adult female American dog tick. It's also important to note the American dog tick is much larger than the black-legged tick. Now let's look at the adult male. The adult male American dog tick is slightly smaller than the adult female. Its mouth parts are also very similar to the adult females. The length of the palpi are equal in width to the basis capitula. Notice the shape of the pattern on the tick's back. 
The distinct coloration on the sputum is key in identifying the adult male American dog tick. Older Wisconsin residents will often say that the male wears suspenders. Festoons are also present on the adult male. The American dog tick nymph is rarely found on humans or domestic animals, um, like dogs or cats, so we will not focus on its characteristics. It's usually found on wildlife. Let's take a look at another common tick in the Northeast, and that's very common in the Midwest as well, Amblyoma americanum, otherwise known as the Lone Star tick. We'll focus on the adult female first. The adult female Lone Star tick has palpi that are longer than the width of the basis capitulum. They also have a very characteristic white dot at the bottom of the sputum. It can be a little bit yellowish too. The white dot on the sputum is the easiest way to recognize the female Lone Star tick. along with its very circular shape. Now let's look at the adult male. The adult male Lone Star Tick also has palpi that are longer than the width of the basis capitulum. Its sputum is a dark reddish brown and it has 11 festoons with iridescent white markings near those festoons, like light that reflects off the tick. The iridescent white markings and the circular shape are the best identifiers for the Lone Star Tick by photos. Finally, let's look at the nymph. The nymph alone star tick also has palpi that are longer than the width of the basis capitulum. Notice the shape of the nymph's body. Compared to the black-legged tick nymph, the lone star tick nymph is far more circular. The round body is key to identifying the lone star tick nymph. Now let's take a look at a recently introduced tick species to the United States, Hemophysalis longicornis, otherwise known as the longhorn tick. One thing to immediately notice from this photo is that there is no male tick present. That's because females reproduce parthenogenically, otherwise known as asexually. They do not need males to mate with before producing viable offspring. Males actually have not been found in the United States as of spring of 2020. The other life stages have only been found in the Eastern United States, as well as some of the more Midwestern and Southern states. The common name for this tick comes from the prominent spurs located on the underside of the palpi. This is not commonly seen in photo submissions. So let's focus on identifying the adult female Asian longhorn tick. The mouth part of the species are very short and wide. The length of the mouth parts is shorter than the width of the basis capitulum. As a whole, the mouth parts are triangular shaped. The sputum is not a distinct color from the allosputum, and it is important to look carefully for the ridge of the sputum. These ticks also have very pronounced cervical grooves, which are symmetrical indentations forming a curved shape on their sputum. The body in the sputum as a whole is a reddish brown and have very distinct festoons at the lower edge. In summary, longhorn ticks have triangular mouth parts with very short palps and a triangular basis capitulum. The sputum has prominent cervical grooves and the body is a reddish brown with prominent festoons. Other less common ticks that you may encounter include Amblyoma maculatum, otherwise known as the Gulf Coast tick, and Ripocephalus sanguineus, the brown dog tick. At first glance, the Gulf Coast tick looks very similar to the American dog tick that we looked at earlier. However, we need to take a closer look and spot some of these differences. Unlike the American dog tick, the Gulf Coast tick has long palpi. The coloration of the Gulf Coast tick sputum is similar to the coloration on the American dog ticks. One noticeable difference though, other than the length of the mouth parts, is that the sputum of the Gulf Coast tick is narrower at the bottom than of the American dog tick. Like the Lone Star Tick, which belongs to the same genus, the Gulf Coast Tick also has 11 festoons on its lower ridge. Now let's look at the adult male. Again, notice the long palpi. And the pattern of coloration on the Gulf Coast Tick is also a little different than the American Dog Tick. Take note of these few differences.
Websites like TakeEncounter.org should be consulted to compare photo submissions to species. The mouth parts and slight differences in the sputum are key in distinguishing the Gulf Coast tick from the American dog tick. Now let's take a look at Rhipocephalus sanguineus, more commonly known as the brown dog tick. Let's focus on the adult female to start. The mouth part of the species are short and much narrower than the basis capitulum, very similar to the longhorn tick actually. Another feature that should be noted is the hexagonal shape of the basis capitulum. The sputum is a very similar color as the rest of the body. You can still see where it ends and there appears to be a darker colored ridge. There is also a prominent cervical groove on the sputum, again, which are those symmetrical indentations forming a curved shape. It's important to look closely for a sputum so you don't misidentify this as a male tick. Females do not appear to have as smooth of a body as the males of this species or other similar looking species. There are darker brown undertones that network through the body and the prominent festoons. The body of the female also narrows near the rear, so it is roughly the same size as the top of the sputum. The key characteristics for identifying an adult female brown dog tick are the short palps with hexagonal basis capitula protrusions, inornate brown sputum with prominent cervical grooves, and brown allosputum that narrows at the end. When comparing the brown dog tick and the Asian longhorn tick, you may think that the mouth parts are similar, so we're going to break down a few differences between the species. First, let's look at the mouth parts, because on first glance, they seem to be the same shape, but really, the hexagonal shape seen in the brown dog tick is the basis capitulum, and the hexagonal shape from the Asian longhorn ticks come from the palps. So, different parts are a similar shape. Secondly, the shapes of the ticks are different. The brown dog tick is the same width at the top of the sputum and the posterior of the tick. The longhorn tick widens near the posterior and is far more circular shaped. Now let's take a look at the adult male. The mouth parts of the species are short and wide, and the mouth parts again are narrower than the basis capitulum. The basis capitulum is also hexagonal shaped in this in the male of this species. The sputum is uniformly dark brown and covers the entire length of the body. The body continues to widen throughout and is prominent for students. So the key characteristics for identifying an adult male brown dog tick are the short palps with the hexagonal basis capitulum, the uniformly dark brown body that widens near the end. So a summary from module two, you have learned how to name the common tick species found in the Midwest and the Northeast, recognize anatomical differences between the major ticks found in the United States, and identify species based on an image.